Hello and welcome to another episode of Stroke Crowns. In this episode, we will discuss on left ventricular clot and acute ischemic stroke. Is it truly a therapeutic conundrum? It's often a confusing and a difficult problem when you get a case of acute ischemic stroke with an LV thrombi. Can we do IV thrombolysis in that patient? When to start anticoagulation after IV thrombolysis? How long he has to be anticoagulated? Is there any relationship of starting anticoagulation with the IV RTP kinetics? These are the questions we often face when you get a patient like this. As usual, we will start with a case. So this is the story of a 67-year-old male. He is a non-coronary artery disease patient. He is on antiplatelet since 2008. He presented with sudden onset grade 1 to 2 weakness of left side and he was taken to nearby hospital in the winter period. An MRI was taken there which shows a right capsuloganglionic and corona radiata infarct with an M1 cutoff, occlusion of M1. So this is a report, absent opacification of right MCA, corona radiata capsuloganglionic infarcts. So he was promptly referred for thrombectomy. So he came after one and a half hours of the index event. On examination in the emergency room, his power was normal. So a CT angiogram was taken, which showed complete recanalization of his vessels. So the usual suspect of the embolic stroke was the question. So we did a echocardiogram in the ER, which showed a left ventricular thrombus. So this is echo report which shows LV apical clot measuring 1 into 0.8 centimeters. So this is one of the interesting papers which was published in Frontiers in Neurology, early administration of therapeutic anticoagulation following IV RTPA. In this case report, they have started therapeutic anticoagulation with heparin 12 hours after IV thrombolysis. I recommend you all of you to go through this. So let's discuss on LV thrombi and cardioembolic stroke. So as you know, 20% of all strokes are cardioembolic strokes and one third of all cardioembolic strokes are due to LV thrombi. They are usually seen following an acute MI or chronic ventricular dysfunction. The myocardial injury will lead to regional wall motion abnormality, stasis of blood and cardiogenic thromboembolism. Usually, they are seen within first three months after the index event. A transthoracic echocardiogram is 96% specific. If not, you can always do a contrast enhanced cardiac MRI which is 99% specific. Highly mobile clot, a clot protruding into the lumen and central echolucency are the clots that possess higher risk for thromboembolism. There is a theoretical risk of destabilization of the LV thrombi when you are thrombolizing the patient, but it is negligible. So the guidelines state that whenever you get a patient STEMI with LV thrombi, you have to anticoagulate him for three months with a vitamin K antagonist and sometimes perhaps indefinitely with a goal INR of 2 to 3. This WASF trial, the famous WASF trial, the warfarin versus aspirin in reduced cardiac ejection fraction, they have found out that if you start our warfarin when compared to aspirin alone, there is lesser strokes. So consider warfarin in patients with previous strokes or TIA if they have reduced cardiac ejection fraction. So alteplase has got two types of half-life. One is the alpha phase half-life and the beta phase. Its alpha phase is the much faster, three to six minutes, and the beta phase due to slower excretion, around 26 to 40 minutes. So theoretically, after 40 minutes, the action should be gone. But in real life, if we measure the fibrinogen level, the plasminogen, the alpha-2 plasmin, everything, it is around 80% of the previous of the normal values at around 24 hours. So at 24 hours, it's still not completely recovered. So can, and they have found out that fibrin degradation products are found even upwards of seven hours. So the action 
is exerted even after seven hours. So there is still no cut off to start an anticoagulation. There are a lot of studies and a study which showed 60 acute ischemic stroke patients who received IV RTPA then followed by nadroparin twice daily immediately and they have found out those who have received, received it after 24 hours and immediately they had similar rates of symptomatic intracranial hemorrhages. So what are the key takeaway points? Yes, thrombolysis is definitely possible. In a high risk LV thrombi, it is reasonable to start anticoagulation early and it's a must to start anticoagulation after 24 hours. So there are case reports which states that we can start anticoagulation at 12 hours. At least three months of anticoagulation is a must in these patients, preferably with a vitamin K antagonist. Thank you. Please leave your comments in the comment sections below.